Hey, Crystal. Hey, Joseph. We talked about almsgiving and prayer. Do you want to talk about fasting? During Lent? Yes. Listen in to find out more. Welcome to A Word from Our Outpost. With Joseph and Crystal Gruber. A podcast for Catholic disciples who are wrestling to be missionary-minded in their normal, everyday lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Did you say Lunt or Lent? Lent. Oh, okay. I was going to correct you, but I was like, did I hear you wrong? And then I realized we spent way too long trying to figure out what the opening line would be of the <laughs> podcast, and we just needed to start. And here we are. We started. We started, and it's still Lent of 2023 when we're recording this and when this will be released. I don't know when you're listening to this, dear listener, but it's common to talk about... It's in the ever-present now. Yeah. That's what you do when you put things on the internet. It's true. And during Lent, it's common to talk about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And we've talked about almsgiving, and we talked about prayer in the last two episodes we released. And I have been reading a book about fasting for my little book club. And I have not. And so we thought it might be good to talk about fasting. Yeah. Now, Joseph, when I told you about this book, the book is called Eat Fast Feast. I should have looked up the author, but I didn't. So here we have it. It's in another room. Um, However, it is pulling together the science that has come out through um, intermittent fasting and its new popularity and tying that into the Christian practice of fasting and i was initially skeptical for two reasons because the title sounded a lot like that uh weird new ag or whatever it was eat pray love yeah it's like i i'm pretty sure he's trying to ride on what that uh um wave that that current whatever that is that eat pray love created anyway it's by jw richards by the by, turns out we have these little pocket computery things, not just used for communication, but originally used for communication. And so we refer to them mostly by their phonic producing <laughs> capacity. There we have it. So that's anyway, the author. We'll put it in the show notes as well. So, one, I thought maybe he was just being hokily writing these currents of, oh, intermittent fasting is the new thing. And Here's a title that's reminiscent of a popular book from a number of years ago. So that was one reason. Uh, Distrust of anything that is fad-like in the fashions of the time. And two, I think I was skeptical because he was going to make an argument about how fasting is good for our bodies. And I had this visceral response of, no, fasting is a spiritual discipline. It shouldn't matter whether it's good for our bodies or not. Or the fact that it's good for our bodies, maybe that takes away something from the Christian use of it. Uh, Like, I I was becoming Cartesian, was what I realized. I thought the spirit and the body, they don't interpenetrate and, and mutually, you know, affect one another and are part, like, the soul being the form of the body. That's... Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I went full, like, Gnostic heretic mode because part of me maybe is a little bit of that. And I realize that's not a good thing. And maybe I should be open to fasting being good for me. Please. <laughs> it's embarrassing to say that I was Gnostic even for a moment. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's good to notice, and it's good to pay attention to where we see these separations between our physical selves and our spiritual selves when they really are physically integrated. And I think this is an interesting piece of this book is at least for the first half of the book, he really is talking about scientifically what is going on. And it's interesting because part of the spiritual pieces, he's sort of like, if it, if it, he basically was like, God wasn't dumb. (laughs) made our bodies to work really well um so like one of the pieces that that happens something scientifically that happens in our bodies when we fast well um 
or like, yeah, when we don't eat for a certain amount of time, our body stops using sugars for energy and starts using stored fat for energy. And this is actually something that our brains and our muscles function really well when we're in this state of energy use. Now, we can't sustain it for tremendously long periods of time, but when it happens, it actually makes us more mentally and physically alert and faster. So the author shares this story of um, where he had to fast for a medical procedure. So this is how he stumbled upon fasting sort of accidentally. And he went to work out after having being 24 hours into his fast, sort of assuming that he was going to be super weak. And he actually felt like ridiculously strong and ridiculously alert. And as he dug into with curiosity, like what, what was that? What happened? What he learned was, was that his body was burning fat instead of carbohydrates because of the amount of time he had gone without eating. And so there was this different kind of energy that he had tapped into. And he discusses how, because for most of human history, people were in this hunter gatherer life that there would be times of fasting necessarily because the food ran out and it's wintertime and we haven't found anything yet. And that that is a moment where there needs to be an increased alertness to be able to find food faster. What I like about this is that the claim is that fasting, uh, pardon if you guys hear any noise in the background, we have children who manipulate doors. Anyway, uh, the fact that fasting is not um, it's like the opposite of taking drugs it's its actually a, an entry into reality a, a, a sensitivity to reality a, a greater sense of sobriety if you will I'm still on a big sobriety chastity and excellence kick these are the big three from Focus the Fellowship of Catholic University students they're also the gateways to the transcendent being sober minded is being just very aware of reality around us and the fact that the church wants us to be aware of reality uh, and that fasting is conducive to that that's super helpful to know yeah and and it's i think an example that brings up the that it's not that we don't need to be cartesian right that there that there is something heightened within us in our person that there is this physical reality that's going on that can be explained by science but also allows for something formative to happen to our souls well even saying that science doesn't uh explain it as in it doesn't discover the origin of it totally, right? It, it describes it. Yes. And it can describe the processes that are coming about. But it's dealing with a given thing. Yes. It, science didn't create these patterns. Science, like the, science has the kind of humble, receptive nature of dealing with received reality, describing it, trying to make sense of it, and, and then when we know more about reality, we can live more prudently within it. Um, and that's, I think that's important to, to note, like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, and I was going to say, I think, I think that this author does that. I don't know that he does it well, but I think he, he does it as at least trying to do it to say like, Hey, this is what's going on scientifically. And this makes sense if we were created by a God who loves us and cares about us and wants us to thrive and do well. And so he like draws that connection. And I think that's a big part, at least so far um, in like up through halfway through the book where he's really drawing up that this is how it works. We have learned this in the last couple of decades as we've come to understand how bodies work more and more with more scientific resources at our hands to study these things. But it works because we were created by a God who cares that we survive. Yeah. 
And it's also interesting because he brings up that a lot of the things that have been happening in the last 50 years, especially around food in the United States, are really destructive to the human person and the optimal functioning of the human per- the human person. Wait, so, there have been things in the past 50 years that are that have been inimical to humanity? Yes. No. Yes, and no. and so that's also really interesting where he brings up things like the government subsidizing certain foods for farmers to grow and then creating a food pyramid that promotes the eating of those foods and yet those foods aren't actually good for our health in fact they're very destructive to our health which is why we have so much diabetes and heart disease and dementia and all these other things i feel like there are probably many reasons for some of those things well sure But the change in diet is like very closely linked as a definite factor. All I'm saying is I think there have been many forces that have been inimical to our humanity. Oh, yes. Especially our understanding of us as bodily creatures. Uh, Maybe from all time. Like that's just like. Oh, for sure. For sure. But I think in regards to fasting in particular, being surrounded in a culture that just even Christians don't fast well, um, where it has been part of the Christian culture to fast for 2,000 years. Yeah, it, it's tied into our, our liturgical life. Yes. Right, like the, the public worship of God also has dietary elements to it. Yeah, and he even brings up like his... His plan for learning how to do intermittent fasting is 46 days long. Because of Lent? It just so happens that it fits very well into Lent, yes. He's like, you can do it faster, you can do it slower, but the, actually just like the I've found, he has found with his personal experimentation, that that just happens to be the best pacing for this plan that he's come up with on preparing your body to be able to burn fat well and then therefore also fast well i'm that seems a little too pat a little too neat i mean that or we have a creator that makes things neat i mean i don't know i we haven't tried it so we can we can report back if we do it someday and maybe this is worth talking about briefly uh you wouldn't try this not right now. No. Why is that? I'm building a human being in my womb. What? You're doing that? <laughs> yeah, I'm pregnant. And pregnant's not a time for fasting. So I, I'm not actually experimenting with this myself right now. And I'm not reading the book. So I'm not experimenting with either. I, experimenting with it either. I'm just living, you know, in this season of Lent. Yeah, I'm excited to meet with my book club to see if anybody else is actively following through with the plan that he lays out. And I'm interested in trying it at some point in time, or at least doing more research. I've heard mixed things about whether or not intermittent fasting is actually good for women in their childbearing years in general. Um, So maybe we can report back more on some of these things. Or dear listener, if you have experience with intermittent fasting or just fasting well in general, I'd love to hear about it. Yeah. I think what he's saying in his book is interesting, most especially, well, I guess in part because um, apparently like a whole large fraction of the population shouldn't be fasting. Um, So that raises some questions. But another piece is that uh, in the Christian tradition, or at least the explanations that I've heard thus far, tend to talk about fasting as um, an embracing of being weak and a a feeling of hunger like uh, and maybe this isn't a good explanation for it like why we fast before we go to mass why we fast on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday um, why there are other fasting days that are more optional but probably should be opted into called Ember Days Uh, why these um, are talked about as you know feeling hunger and feeling 
weaker and experimenting or, or experiencing rather our limitations as human beings, our, our um, inherent creatureliness before the creator is an interesting thing compared to what this author is saying is that, oh, while fasting, we actually have a different source of energy that we do tend to burn rather well. And it's like burning up something that we ourselves, like it's part of us, like our fat cells. Some of us are quite fond of our fat cells and we, we consume them, we burn them, right? Like that's what metabolizing is. We, it's an internal, you know, 98.6 degree flame that we're keeping lit all our life long. And in fasting, we allow our fat cells to, to enter that conflagration. Um, and he's saying, oh, that's actually a really good thing. And we, we run rather well on that. Like the, the stuff that we stored is a good source of fuel when we let it be. So is that a tension between the two explanations? Are they complementary? Uh, is he right? And everybody who has explained it to me before is wrong. I'm willing to entertain that because sometimes people make things up. I've heard explanations before that I thought were pretty good from people I trusted. And I was like, just thinking about it a lot more. I, I'm not sure if I'm on, I, I'm not sure if I agree with them. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting. Um, this is an interesting proposition that I haven't thought much about yet. Oh no, this is what I've been thinking ever since you told me about the book. Yeah, so so some initial thoughts are one is there's there's something to So we've talked I'm pretty sure on this podcast at least a few times about this progression from vice to virtue and how there's incontinence and continence and then virtue. And it, it seems like the like no, it's good to feel weak and hungry and to wrestle with the rage of my hanger is like a continent response or maybe sometimes an incontinent response depending to fasting and it seems like to enter into this and say you know when i am weak like i you can't continue in this state forever of burning like you can't burn fat forever eventually there will be no more fat to burn so like it's Brian not and hatchet had burned all of his fat stores by the end of the book hatchet by gary paulson yeah and like that those who haven't read it wonderful book about a child having to survive in the canadian wilderness yeah so so i think right like this isn't a forever thing and there is something that um so there, there's still this dependency on god right that he's and and there's still a need and and there's something in that like to enter into this there's there's a leap of faith to say i'm i'm no longer in control when i'm eating i'm in control of where my calories and where my energy are coming from when i stop i have to entrust the way that i've been made to work out and so i think that's an interesting piece of this <laughs> And, and I do think that being able to trust that process and enter into it and be, in fact, energized by it seems like actually the more virtuous response to fasting. And as opposed to a more continent response of just like, yeah, of course it's hard and just deal with it. White knuckle through and try not to yell at people. So there, there might actually be a way of experiencing fasting that is joy filled. Yes. Not rage filled. Yes. Why that just turns everything on its head, doesn't it? You like it when things get turned around sometimes. I how don't do you, always trust how it. How do you feel about this one? Don't always <laughs> trust it. No, I don't trust it. But it could be true. It could be true that the things that God asks of us that when en entered into rightly, when we've actually become virtuous that they become sources of joy. Hmm. Well, I would love to hear from you, dear listener. Did, I just wanted to toss out there, if we wanted to, we could talk briefly about a short story you've never read, both you, dear listener probably, and you, Crystal, by Kafka, called The Hunger Artist. But I'm checking your face and you don't seem interested. <laughs> 
Well, I just I thought of you were about to wrap up of a neat wrap up. Yeah, and I thought of a neat story by Kafka. Is it super helpful and no, related? No, it's okay. not. <laughs> we'll save it for another time then, and say I, if you listener have experienced fasting well, where where you feel like it is. Um, maybe a virtue that you possess to use that language or something that you feel like you've been entered, been able to enter into and not have it. Um, yeah, I, to, to enjoy it, but in a way that still is, seems to be within the spirit of the, the thing of fasting. I'd love to hear about it. Yeah. This tension between explanations that maybe you listener have heard before. Definitely. We have heard before about fasting being like, Oh, this, you know, shrinking and, and becoming, you know, just very aware of how limited we are um, versus this other explanation of fasting of, oh, no, this is this is opening us up to something different and is making use of our bodies in a way that we otherwise just wouldn't use them. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a fascinating tension. I don't have the resolution to it, but you, dear listener, might. So we'll we'll have a link to the book in the show notes. We'll have a link to Gary Paulson's Hatchet, if you're interested in a nice young adult novel that uh, recently Crystal and our son read, and I started but haven't finished yet, but I've read before. What else did we... You can email us at hello at our outpost with your fasting success stories, if you like. Yeah. And with that, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the gifts of almsgiving, prayer, and fasting, especially during this season of Lent. And um, we pray for continued clarity in your will in our lives and how we're called to enter into these things. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. From our outpost to yours, thanks for listening. And a special thanks to John Mark Skoke. That's S-K-O-C-H. For the music. Check him out on Spotify. 